So if you need to create content in Microsoft Office apps and Microsoft 365, and you have to share it with people to review and make changes, I'm gonna be showing you in this video tutorial how to use a new technology from Microsoft called Microsoft Loop. Specifically, Loop Components, allowing you to create a piece of content and actually synchronize it back to a single place. That means you can take a paragraph of words and you can have that inside of Outlook. Send it to your colleagues, have them make changes to it in the same email that you sent them. And it synchronizes back to that single version that you have, meaning you don't need to create all of those changes and bring them all back together, taking time out of your day. Not only that, it's available in Teams as well. You can create a task list and other content and do exactly the same and even copy between Teams and Outlook and vice versa. And in the future, you'll also have this capability available inside of Microsoft Word as well. So let's go and take a look at how Loop Components is gonna save you time every single day and how you can get the most from it. Now we'd love it before we head into that content, hit the like button and also follow us for more great content in the future as well to find even more tips on how you can improve the way you work. Anyway, let's go head into that video and find out how you can use Loop Components today. So let's get started using Outlook for the web. This is also available on Outlook for desktop. And what you can see here is I've drafted an email to my colleagues, Megan and Nestor, and I'm simply saying, can you please check the content and then come back with an updated version? Now the content inside of this email is actually plain text. We can see this by hovering over it. We can actually change the bold, etc. And I could go ahead and then click on send. But the problem is when I get responses back from Megan and Nestor, I'm gonna to have to then update this original content and bring both their changes into it, which is gonna take me a lot of time to come back, especially if I sent it to even more people. So instead, let's delete this plain text content from my email and replace it with a loop component. Let's go to the top of Outlook and select loop components, and we can select from one of these components here. Now I'm gonna also now focus on paragraph, but you can see you can use a table, a task list, and other components. I'm gonna select paragraph, and you can actually see I have a title and now can add content. So you can now see if I now paste this content into the paragraph area, I'll also change the word goals and put it as the title. Just to make it more clear, I'll also put project goals. You actually see clicking into this that it's exactly the same scenario. I can highlight it, change the italic, add bold, underline and so forth. But that content is now in this actual purple shading. And you can see it's got this kind of loop logo and referencing that kind of first line of the subject. And it also shows that Alex, the account I'm logged in, is actually using this component now and I'm highlighting the content. Now I could also add further content by going to the bottom where it says type and then forward slash to insert and simply type in that. You can see I can add other components outside of what it provided me in the actual Outlook interface. I could tag a person and so forth and add an image. So it's all possible to do that in this loop component, but we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna click on send. So that email has now been sent to both Megan and Nestor. We can see this in our sent items, it looks much the same as what a normal email does to us inside of Outlook. And also when we log in here as Megan, you can see the email from Alex looks much the same. The difference is now though, Megan can actually click into the content here and begin to make changes. So rather than seeing that in a read-only fashion on email, responding with those changes, it's very simple for Megan to come in here and make updates. So as an example, and delete this phrase, emotional connection is the key. I've deleted that and effectively then can click out of that loop component. And as if by magic, when we're using Alex's login, we can now see that that change has been made live on this email that Alex is reviewing. And not only that, Alex has the email open and it even shows that Megan has his file open and he's also making changes. So Megan's changes will immediately synchronize back to this email, meaning all of those changes are synced. And including Nestor who picks up the email, Nestor will see the most recent version of that component change, meaning he will have the latest version, including all of Megan's changes. And to further show that, I've added both of these emails. On the left, we have Alex's email, and we have also Megan's email on the right. So if Alex goes back in here and deletes a paragraph, you can see that highlighting on the right hand side is shown to Megan where Alex is working. If I then make a change to this content, for example, highlighting it and then making it bold, 
you can also see on the right hand side that Megan's email is updated immediately. So all of these changes are simply synchronized back into that loop component, meaning it's continually updated for any changes. Now, of course, Megan can go back and also send a reply. Looks good to me. Here is the latest version, handily pre-populated using Outlook for the web with its AI capabilities. But I'll put here is the latest version and click on send. Now, of course, that email will still come back, but that importantly, that component will no doubt stay the same in place, synchronized across all of those emails. So you've just seen the power there of a loop component inside a Microsoft Outlook, meaning only one version is kept updated and there's no need for you to keep on top of all of those emails coming back and also updating that single version in place. But not all collaboration happens inside of Outlook. You of course may be using Microsoft Teams and you also have the same capability. So when you need to send a chat message to Megan or one of your colleagues, you can also insert a loop component. Just go down to the type of message box and click into that. And then you'll see at the bottom, you have a little loop components button. Select loop components. And again, you'll see what similar capability we had inside of Outlook, paragraph, table, task list, and so forth. Now I'm gonna add a task list here because I want me and Megan to collaborate on that project and begin doing some initial areas for us to investigate. So I'm gonna select task list. You can see here it says add a title and all the tasks inside of this actual list itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a title and add a few tasks. And I'm gonna also assign them to Megan as well. Now, before we go and hit send on this and send this message, we're also gonna take a note of this at the top. It says people in your org with this link can edit. That means that anyone with this link in the company will be able to edit my initial tasks. And that might be fine if you wanna forward this on to other people, but you can also click in the drop down and change the security of this loop component. So I can actually say people currently in this chat are the only people that have the ability to change these tasks and therefore the access rights are very much locked down so the whole organization can't see this and also make changes. Now if I click apply, that will then change the security of that loop component and then when I go ahead and hit send, it'll now send that message into the Microsoft Teams chat. Now once again, much like we saw in Outlook, this component is dynamically updated. I mean, I can click back into it and I can also update a task. So for example, write up a plan about project scoping. Now, of course, in a normal static message, this would not be possible unless you edited the team's message. But of course, that doesn't allow that dynamic ability to also update and make changes. So in this scenario, let's go and have a look at what Megan's experience looks like inside of Teams and also show that again, those changes can be synchronized in real time. Now, as we can see on the left and right, I have my task list for project scoping showing also on the left on Alex's machine and on the right we see in Megan's. Now in much the same, Megan can come in here and add a further task. So Megan might want to go get budget approval and therefore very simply can add a task and allocate it to Alex. And as if by magic, as you can see on the left hand side, we now see that task has been added to Alex that Megan simply defined inside of that component in that Teams chat because the component for loop is dynamically updated. But you may now be thinking, that's great, Scott. But the problem is we obviously are only collaborating in Teams. What if we can move this between another Office app? For example, I wanna send this over to Nestor, who's the director of the project. He needs to see this initial task of project scoping. That means I have to copy and paste it right or recreate it again. And the answer is no. All you need to do is go across and select copy link. You can then go back into your early email that we sent to both Alex and Nestor and select reply all. And now we have that loop component copied onto my PC. So I'm simply gonna control V to paste that into this email. And there we go. As if by magic, the initial task of project scoping is now defined here. But there is a problem with this component. And most people may overlook this, but if Nestor had this component, he would not be able to open it. The reason why is originally when I sent this to Megan, you may remember we set this to only be shared with Megan. However, we can make a change and even Outlook is telling me that because it's highlighting it in red. If I left click into that, you actually see it says Nestor will, does not have access to this. So if I actually sent it, it wouldn't load for Nestor. Instead, I can click on people who already have access can view or edit and I can actually change this and I could place it to people in the organization 
recipients of this message and so forth. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this to recipients of this message because both Nestor and Megan are on their email thread. Click apply and at which point I'm going to go ahead and send this email out. Nestor will now be able to have access to that, make changes and see the latest version of all of those tasks. Super simple to do when it comes to small security changes to ensure the people that receive that email will also have access to your component when you're sending it. But fundamentally, we have created content in Teams, collaborated it, we've synced those changes back, and then we're sending an email to our project director with also those tasks that he can also get involved with without having multiple copies of the content for you to actually bring together in a single version, so saving you a whole heap of time. And also Microsoft have recently released the Loop app and the Loop app is available via web browser and there is a recent tab. So in the future, if you want to come back to these components we've just created, we can very simply click into recent and then open up effectively that Loop component. As you can see here, our one we created earlier with access through the app without going back to those original emails or Teams messages. A simple change here will obviously reflect in both Outlook and Teams for the people that have access to those components. So that's coming very soon. You'll be able to use Loop and have quick access to all of your components without going back to those old emails or Teams messages as well. And Loop app goes way beyond that, allowing you to create workspaces. And we're also going to cover the Loop app in a separate video on our channel. So head into our videos to check out how you can use the latest Microsoft Loop app. But we've now covered a huge amount of capability using those components, saving you time every single day. And there we have it, Loop components inside of Teams and Outlook, guaranteed to save you some time every day in creating content and having to not synchronize it all back together, taking time out of your day. If you like this video, we'd love it to hit the like button, subscribe for more content in the future, of course, to find even more videos like this that you've seen today. And we also have a Microsoft 365 ebook in the video description below that you can have for free that we've created for you. Otherwise, we'll be seeing you in the next one.